I'm Shivan Karka. I'm a senior scientist at the Stockholm Environment Institute. There's a lot of science behind climate change, and it's obviously really important and really essential. But it's also the case that the science is kind of settled. And like, we know what's happening, we know how quickly it's happening, we know how bad it'll be if it continues to happen. And so one of the important roles of scientists is to help translate that and make that useful for the organizations that are trying to get political action. One of the things that I've been doing is working with a group called the Civil Society Equity Review Coalition. And this started about 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago, in the run-up to the Paris COP, um, which was a big COP that led to the Paris Agreement. And one of the things that we knew would be incredibly important is to try and get countries to give ambitious commitments to reduce their emissions. And so the research that we did, that we, we provided to the civil society organizations and that we worked with them to, to sort of publicize, um, was sort of really fact-based data about what were these various countries' contributions to the problem. And, and what are their potential you know, um, resources, financial resources, technological resources for dealing with the problem. And so armed with that information, they could make very clear statements about what should countries be doing? What is a fair contribution? Civil society has become more and more receptive, more um, not only receptive, but eager to have real action at home. As far as policymakers, as far as the private sector, um, there has not been as much movement as we would have wanted. We're still far off course. We're far off course, not only in terms of the amount of emission reductions that, that governments are promising, but also in terms of the production of fossil fuels. The United States, for example, world's biggest producer of oil, the world's biggest producer of gas, the world's biggest consumer of oil, the world's biggest consumer of gas. It's exporting more and more. It's still providing subsidies to the fossil fuel industry. And it's not helpful. It's not helpful as far as trying to deal with what really ultimately is, is the most serious problem that we as a global community are dealing with. I'm still holding out hope for something meaningful on international support on climate finance because if we really want countries to do what is sufficient to keep warming on a, get warming onto a one and a half degree pathway instead of a three degree pathway, then a lot of reductions have to happen in the north and a lot has to happen in the south. And in fact, what needs to happen in the south, in the developing countries, is beyond what their fair share would be. They have to do more than would really be fair because We've delayed so much, we've used up so much of the carbon budget, and the only way to square that circle between what's just necessary and what's fair is through international support. The North has to provide more climate finance, more technological support, more institutional support, more accommodations in terms of the global institutions that govern how we deal with technologies and how we deal with trade and how we deal with finance. And it's only through that kind of international cooperation that we can solve this problem.